So thank you for joining us. This session is to discuss the online and part-time graduate programs in applied and computational mathematics offered through the Whiting School of Engineering at Johns Hopkins University. My name is Cheryl Williams. I am the Assistant Director of Recruitment and Marketing for the Whiting School of Engineering. To give us more information on applied math, I have with me our chair, Dr. James Spall. Thank you, Cheryl. Happy to be back. So the Applied and Computational Math program uh, within the EP for Johns Hopkins University has a long pedigree going back at least to the 1960s in some form. And it is currently one of the largest part-time uh, applied math programs in the country. Um, we do serious work. We emphasize both the applied aspects as well as the theoretical aspects of the field. Um, all of our, all the methods that are discussed tend to are, are such that they have a, a good, strong theoretical foundation, but we also do keep in mind the applied aspect, the methods that we, we talk about, the formal methods, the theoretical methods, the mathematical approaches and algorithms and such all have a, a strong application side in the sense that the method, the material tends to be highly applicable in practical applications. Uh, next slide. So let me just say a few things about the Applied and Computational Math program in general. We offer two formal certifications, one of which is the Master of Science degree, and that is by far and away our most popular certification for students graduating from the program. Uh, we also offer a post-master certificate, which is just what it says after a person has a master's degree in a field very close or identical to ACM, uh, they can apply for and uh, pursue the uh, post-master certificate. Something short of a doctorate, certainly, but something pretty significant and rigorous beyond the master's degree. Uh, for the master's degree itself, again, which I mentioned is, is our most popular program, uh, it requires 10 total courses. The courses must be complete within five years. And again, these time frames are set up to accommodate working professionals recognizing that usually they're taking one or at most two courses at a, at a time. Oftentimes our students are, are able to complete the master's degree in two to three years, even while working full-time or near full-time. Uh, the master's program offers five focus areas, which I'll talk about shortly in more detail. I should just mention here, though, the focus areas are strictly optional and more for guidance of the student in terms of formulating their thinking and crystallizing their thinking in terms of the kind of things they might want to pursue. They do not show on the diploma itself. We have both online and on-site courses that are available. So you can pursue a degree fully online, you can pursue a degree fully on-site, or a blend of the two. Next slide. So the 10 courses are include both a set of core courses and a set of elective courses. So within the core courses, we have a couple that are at our sort of introductory graduate level, uh, one of which is at a required uh, mathematical statistics course at the introductory level that all students are expected to take. We also have a theorem proof class that everybody has to take, and then we offer either a real analysis course there or a matrix theory course. And by the way, I should mention <clears throat> that the matrix theory course that we offer at the graduate level goes well beyond the standard linear algebra course that people encounter typically as an engineering or math or science student uh, as an undergraduate. Then beyond that, we have uh, another pair of core courses at the upper level, which we call the 700 level, uh, and that's offered within either the differential equations sequence, within a mathematical statistics sequence, or within a stochastic process sequence. And all students are expected to take one of those three upper level 700 level sequences. Then beyond those four core courses, students may pursue or are required basically to pursue six elective courses, which we allow two to be outside of the ACM program. So many of our students will, for example, take a couple of courses, perhaps in the electrical engineering program or in the applied physics program or a computer science program. But some students pursue all of their electives within the ACM program itself because we do offer many, many courses. And in all honesty, many of our students find that our courses are quite interesting and, 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 and are really more, we have more opportunities to take, to, we have more, more interesting courses than they can take in the pursuit of their degree. So that's the, the overall composition of our master's degree program is 10 courses, maximum time limit of five years, divided up into the core courses and the elective courses as I've just discussed. We also, by the way, offer a thesis option 
which is, counts as two upper-level courses. So <clears throat> if you are interested in doing a research project, a serious research project, you may do a master's thesis. You may also do a master's project, which is a one-semester course. So the master's thesis is a two-semester offering. The master's project is a one-semester offering. But in either of those cases, you are able to do some serious research to put into practice some of what you've learned in the earlier part of your master's degree. Next slide. So I mentioned earlier that we offer five focus areas, and these, are, again, are strictly optional. <clears throat> Students may look into the catalog and find out what the courses are that are offered within each of these focus areas. So for example, a student interested in oper operations research will see a list of our courses, a subset of our overall course offerings, such that the focus is on the operations research field. Students oftentimes find these focus areas to be helpful in crystallizing their thinking, um, to allow them to formulate a sharper degree and something that actually be more marketable in the field. And you can see the five focus areas that we offer, uh, all in popular areas of analysis in, 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 the, in the field right now. Next slide. <clears throat> so here is a sample program that a student might pursue within the operations research focus area if they chose to sort of stay within a focus area. Um, I mentioned the four core courses, so what you see at the top of the, of the slide here are the four core courses, the mathematical statistics course, which we call statistical methods and data analysis. This student chose to do a matrix theory as the required theorem proof class, and the other option would be a real analysis class. And then this student chose amongst the three possible upper-level sequences to do the stochastic process sequence, and the other two or the differential equation sequence and the mathematical statistics sequence. Then we see that this student chose as electives uh, a couple of courses in the general finance area. That apparently was their area of interest. A stochastic optimization and control course, an upper level course, which allows them to get into some state of the art methods and in, in just what you see there, optimization with a stochastic flavor to it, as well as a modeling and simulation class, again, an upper, another upper level class for us. And then as a final completion of this program, the student chose two program electives, and both of these turned out to be within the ACM program. Again, this is optional. You can also choose those two electives outside of the program with approval from your advisor. Uh, in this case, it was a cryptography and a design of experiments course. So as you can see, when you sort of step back and look at the overall program of 10 courses, this is a very strong master's program with an operations research flavor. But there are many variations of this of this program for any anybody with a different type of an inter interest. Next slide. So just let me say a little bit about our faculty. 100% of them have a doctoral degree. Uh, many of them are award-winning uh, faculty members, uh, either for their technical accomplishments or for their teaching accomplishments, or for both, uh, including things such as professional society fellows, like ACM fellows or IEEE fellows. They are as award winning, both in the sense of being recognized for external contributions through, say, fellowships of the professional societies or internal recognition uh, at their workplace. Um, they are leaders. Many of them are, are in leadership roles within their workplace uh, and supervise others who are doing mathematics. Um, many of them have published as well in the external literature. Um, going through the peer review process and getting things published in, in well-recognized journals. And just in general, I would say that all of our faculty are innovators in their own right, whether it's through the work that they do for their organization or whether it's in the external world or some of both. Next slide. So let me just say a little bit about the application process. It is designed to be easy. It's an online application. You provide, in particular, two key inputs that we use for evaluation purposes. The academic transcript of all of your past academic training, everything, every course that you've taken post high school, we want to see a transcript for that, as well as a resume. The typical review time for a, a what I would might call a cut and dried application would be around six weeks. I must say that if, if it's a situation where there are some questions or we need to get more information, it can sometimes take a little bit longer, but we always try to keep it to a maximum of eight weeks, even in the cases where to require further and deeper evaluation. In terms of near-term important dates, 
Today was uh, the opening for the spring registration. So that is uh, for people who are already admitted as students, they could register beginning today for courses offered in the spring, which for us, spring starts in January. It's a little bit early, but, but that's what we call our spring semester. It goes from January through May. Um, the spring term, again, begin, as you can see, begins at the end of January. There will be other registration dates, of course, for our summer semester and for our fall semester in the following. We have three semesters uh, throughout the academic year. Next slide, please. So in terms of what's required for an application, a successful application, we look for certainly a bachelor's degree with a strong technical content uh, and some math. Obviously, we would expect to see uh, math, uh, math through at least multivariate calculus, together with usually at least one other course, such as differential equations or linear algebra or advanced calculus. We expect to see a GPA of at least 3.0. Um, and familiarity with one programming language. We're very flexible in terms of what that programming language is, Python, C++, MATLAB, R, whatever. Um, but we want people to have familiar, familiarity with the programming language because this isn't applied in computational math. And, and some of the courses through the program will have a fairly heavy computational requirement and require students to do some level of programming. Note that we do not require GRE scores for admission. Uh, we have found in the past they offer relatively little information uh, regarding success in our academic program. All right, so quick review of next steps and important dates, and then we'll get right to your questions. I've seen them pouring in. So if you are interested in uh, studying with us in this program, your first step is to complete your online application. You can do that by visiting this URL that you see here on your screen, ep.jhu.edu backslash apply. And then to submit your academic transcripts and your professional resume. By the way, uh, instructions on where to send these additional documents can be found on the online application form. It's in the text that's directly above the form important dates. As Jim said, today was our first day for spring registration. It opened today, October the 25th, and our spring semester starts on January the 28th of 2019. So we still do have time before the spring semester starts. Uh, if you would like to study with us in the, in the spring semester, uh, we would highly encourage you to submit your application materials as soon as possible. 